Shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, all praises and double line is due to Yahweh Bahashim Hamashiach Wamalak Yahweh Shai. Secondly, this is Brother Yardan W. Five Detroit coming back at you with yet another cold cut. Today in this cold cut, we'll be reading a brief article from the website endtimeheadlines.org. And as you can see in front of you, the title reads Washington Monument Struck by Lightning, Shutting It Down. So we're going to read a little bit of this article and dive into the precepts. As all of these things that's happening around the world, for example, the earthquakes, all these uh, forest fires, tsunamis, seditions among men, all these things are documented or, you know, already prophesied in the scriptures. That's the word I'll use, it's already prophesied, right? So don't be surprised that these things are happening. So let's dive into it. The Washington Monument was struck by lightning and has been closed Monday for repairs, according to the National Mall National Park Service. The Daily Caller is reporting that the monument was struck by lightning during storms Sunday morning, which caused damage to the electronic access system. The National Mall NPS tweeted, the technicians are on site as I write this. We should know more when they're finished. All right. See this. Following a 2011 earthquake that struck Washington, the monument suffered damage, damages which a billionaire philanthropist donated $7.5 million to, in 2016 to fix. The monument reopened on September 19, 2019, following a 37-month $10.7 million renovation. And that's Esau trying to it's Esau trying to make sure that their establishments and their wicked ass um, devices remain intact. All right, and this isn't this uh, this Washington Monument is in fact the obelisk for those who don't know. So we're going to look it up for Israel. Right, built in the shape of an Egyptian obelisk, evoking the timeless of ancient civilizations. The Washington Monument embodies the awe, respect, and gratitude the nation felt for this most essential founding father. That's wicked. This is all very wicked. We're living in a place full of idols and, 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 and all manner of a damn sin and wickedness, man. That's disgusting. All right. See that? So this is an idol that people actually worship. They kiss it. They kind of walk around it. You know, people are in love with this. See, they got one over there in, uh, where is this at? I want to say uh, in Europe. They got this in France. You see that? They got another obelisk. What does this read? It's like an obelisk tampered monolithic pillar originally erected in Paris at the entrance of ancient Egyptian temples. The Egyptian obelisk was carved from a single piece of stone, usually red granite, from the quarries of Aswan. It was designed to be wider as its square or rectangular base than, as, than at its pyramidal top, which was often covered with an alloy of gold and silver called electrum. All four sides of the obelisk shaft are embellished with hieroglyphs that characteristically include religious dedications, usually to the sun god, and commemorations of the rulers. So ultimately, this is them commemorating the uh, Egyptian rule, right? And we're living in modern day Egypt. We're gonna prove that through the precepts. This book is 2nd Ezra chapter 15, verse 10. Ooh, this whole chapter is good. I'll set our verse 8. I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. This is speaking about Esau. All right. If you understand Esau's nature, which you should by now, 
you'll you'll truly understand that he's wicked in everything that he does. When it comes to the media, when it comes to politics, when it comes to the Hollywood, everything he touched, it turns to wickedness. So moving on, behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. Because Esau, they killed babies. They p killed people that was just, just so happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. On a lower level, you understand that they killed a lot of the innocent. Verse 9, And therefore said the Lord, I will surely avenge them, and receive unto me, and all the innocent blood from among them. Verse 10, Behold, my people as glad as a flock to the slaughter. I would not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. Now, when you read the scriptures, of course, there's always three three ways to really understand, to, uh, to truly understand this, uh, the scriptures. You got to read it with the historical lens, with the spiritual lens, and with the, um, the spirit of understanding. All right. So in a historical lens, you understand that Ezra... When he was in, uh, when he was writing these things, and when he was a scribe, it wasn't in Egypt. The Egyptian captivity was, was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago. All right, this is during the time of the uh, Syrian captivity. You understand? So when he says, "I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt," this is more so a prophecy. All right, because we weren't dwelling in the land of Egypt during the time of Ezra. We weren't dwelling in the land of Egypt during the time of uh, Jeremiah, for real. All right. So let me read that again. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. That's speaking about now. Today is modern day Egypt. We know that when we read Deuteronomy 28 and 68, verse 11. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before. See that? That's even more proof to let you know that this place is modern day Egypt right he will smite let me read it again I will bring them with the mighty hand and stretch our arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before as in when we uh, first left Egypt the, uh, the first Egypt you understand with plagues as before and I will destroy all the land thereof Egypt shall mourn and the foundations of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that God shall bring upon it. All right, so I'm bringing this out to let you know that this place that we call America, the Great, is actually Egypt. It's Egypt 2.0. And we know that through, well, a lot of Esau's architecture, for an example, the obelisk. They pay a lot of homage to, uh, to ancient Egypt. Spelled that wrong. There were more pictures that used to pop up. Esau kind of took them down. Oh, look at this. Damn, you see this? Can't make this up. Damn. You got an obelisk in where? In Persia. Turkey. Wherever that is. Uh, I believe that's Ethiopia or, or, or e Etopia. Uh, yeah, it's Egypt, Brazil, Mexico. Uh, Europe, I believe, France, Austro Austria, uh, Spain, Italy, Greece, Portugal, Argentina, oh, it's lot here. Canada, Uruguay, Venezuela, Colombia, Chile, uh, Dominican Republic, or Republic of Dominica, Dominicana, uh, Susia, Russia, Israel, Omnia, the Vatican, I believe. Right, you keep you read the rest in yourself. Damn near everywhere. All right. And best believe they probably do a whole lot of witchcraft and ceremonies, perhaps deep underground. And you know you can say it's a conspiracy, but hey, you know you got if if you've been watching everything that's been going on around the news, you understand that conspiracy theorists are like ten and zero. You know, a lot of conspiracies. Are actually uh, the truth 
All right, and a lot of people are not trying to admit it. Oops. See that? Can't make it up. So it's a good thing that it got smitten with lightning. This is Isaiah 30, uh, Isaiah 30 and 30. And it reads, And the Lord shall cause his glorious voice to be heard, and shall shew the lightnings down of his arm, with the indignation of his anger, and with the flame of a devouring fire, with scattering and tempests and hailstones. Through the voice of the Lord shall the Assyrian be beaten down, which smote with a rod. See that? So the Assyrians, hey, these Egyptians, these modern day uh, Egyptians, Babylonians, they're going to be smitten down, right, with lightning and thunders and earthquakes and pestilence and famines, and it's a beautiful thing. Get another one. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 10, verse 15. Shall they axe, and the axe in this context is the Assyrians, all right? Esau, these nations, they're referred to as instruments of war, right? To chastise Israel. Shall the axe boast itself against him that heweth therewith? And again, so the Lord is using these nations as a tool, an instrument of war to chastise us. So again, these nations are the axe. The Lord's, it's like the Lord is using his, his right arm to wield that axe and to hew us down, right? But not completely. Shall the axe boast itself against him that he therewith? Or shall the saw magnify itself against him that shaketh it? When you use a saw, you shake in the saw. All right, now these instruments that you use for uh, either cutting down or building, it's like it's specifically really cutting down, they don't boast themselves against their maker because they're the tool. Esau is just a tool to stop us from, you know, from the tree of life. When you read in Genesis 3 and 24, he's that sword. All right. That's all they are. Verse, uh, let's continue. As if the rod should shake itself against them that lift it up, or as the staff should lift up itself as it were no wood. All right. So these nations, they get boast, they got real boastful and prideful. All right. And the Lord's like, hey, what you going to do? Boast yourself against me? I made you an instrument of war. All right. Verse 16. Therefore shall the Lord of hosts send among his fat ones leanness, and under his glory shall be like it shall kindle a burning, like the burning of a fire. All right. So you see that? These nations get him burnt literally on a physical level. If you saw the news, uh, I believe Nakam did the cold cut. Uh, Israel caught a damn fire. This is beautiful. We love seeing this. Huge Jerusalem area wildfire burns into the night as police hunt for missing man. All right. We had a big ass fire going on. We like seeing that stuff. That's not the real land. And, you know, a lot of those uh, Amalekites, they was, uh, <laughs> it's funny, they was packing up and they was leaving. They was leaving their homes. And I find that real funny. Wildfire in Jerusalem, hills send smoke clouds over a city. See, that's how the Lord is going to uh, come back. The multitude of his clouds, if you understand what I'm saying. Let's, let's bring it out. Psalms 104 and 13. 103, 14. Let me see. Slack, yeah. Uh, Psalms 104 and 3. 
who, who layeth the beams of his chariots in the waters. It's like who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. All right, so don't think all those red moons, those blood moons that we saw was for no reason that they were for naught. The Lord did it because, you know, he thought they looked pretty. Hey, remember those blood moons, you know, the lets us know that the Lord is coming back soon. All right, and when the Lord comes back, what is he going to do to Jerusalem with all those Amalekites? And hey, he's going to slaughter them. He's going to come back with his clouds and it's going to be all, his garment is going to be red like that. All right, you can't make this stuff up. People think this is all just happening for just, you know, coincidence. No, all of these things are symbolic. The Lord is going to come back and destroy the, these trees. And what is trees according to the Bible? Trees are referring to men. He's going to come back with his clouds and it's going to be bloody. Where are we at? Let's get the book of James. For the sun is no sooner risen with the burning heat, but it withereth the glad it's like the grass, and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perisheth, so also the rich man fade away in his ways. Those Amalekites they're notorious for being rich and very wealthy. All right, so they will fade away in all his wickedness. Let's get to other precept. Let's get to And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and the power, and slaking so power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. All right, going into the missiles. Let's get another one. No, that's all I really wanted. I don't, I don't intend for this to be a huge, long breakdown. But Israel should get the point. All right. But with that, I'm going to bid Israel Shalom and to stay strong in the spirit and the truth and the power of Yahweh Hashem Shai and, and to observe what's going on around the world. Right. Don't think that these things are happening just by random. The Lord's making all these things happen. All right. But with that, I'm going to bid Israel Shalom.